Good morning, good morning. It's about a brisk 20 degrees this morning. Um, I was warm in my hammock, but yet once I got out, it's another story. My shoes were soaked yesterday and they're frozen solid this morning. <laughs> so I end up sleeping with my filter. Second second time this year I had to sleep in my filter. <clears throat> so I'm gonna put these frozen, at least they're not wet, I guess, right at this particular moment. They will be once they start to warm up. Shoes on. Tracy already took off. She was cold all night. Her sleeping bag is just not working out for her. Um, my hammock here. It, uh, as long as everything's aligned right, the under quilt and is just right, and you got the top quilt covering you, I'm, I was sweating last night, actually. I my 20 degree stuff and just, I was too hot, actually. But um, anyways, we're going to head up and hit three peaks today. We're gonna come out of the campsite, hang a left, and we'll come up to, we'll, yeah, 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 let's try that one more time. So we'll come up to, it's another herd path, but they're calling it Calkins Brook Trail on my GPS. And that will bring us up to Donaldson, which is 4,000, I can't read, my eyes aren't working this morning, 4,062. And then we'll either go right or left from there and hit Emmons at 4022 or Seward, which is 4327. So what was, what was uh, Seymour yesterday? It was 4055. So we'll hit our biggest summit today, which is Seymour. Seward. Se Seward. <laughs> oh, I gotta wake up. This is what happens if you stop drinking coffee. Uh, so anyways, I gotta get these frozen shoes on and catch up with Tracy. Should be a good day once we get moving. It's supposed to be a beautiful day. It's sunny today. Yesterday we still hit some bad weather on and off. Rain, snow, freezing stuff, blah, blah, blah. And it was windy, windy, windy and cold at the summit. So today is supposed to be a lot nicer. So let's go check it out and see. like this anymore. Wooza. That's a mighty big hump. And here we are, intersection of Cockins Cockins Truck Trail where it turns like a Cockins Brook Trail. Heads up the mountain. So the trail ended up coming to the, a little bit to the east of Donaldson Summit. So we decided to go over to Seward first, get the big one out of the way, and go back over to Donaldson and then off to the other one. So anyways, let's get this done. A bit icy up here, but not too bad. Not, not enough to need micro spikes yet. And it's supposed to be in 47 on the summit today, so some of this oh, so some of this should melt. We'll see though. So that's where we, we came up on the east side of Donaldson. And we decided to come over here to Seward first. So coming down in the coal and back up. And then we we'll go back up Donaldson to the summit. Down around over there to Emerson. 
is where we're heading. It's the middle hump. Can't see the one to the left from where we are. One from the left look cool actually, but we're gonna kind of go around it. We're gonna go right up diagonal up this one. But of course, in the way the Adirondacks like to do it, we get to drop like a rock first. So here we go, down, 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 just to go up, 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 up. So, and then we'll come back, uh, back over Donaldson and head out. And that will be the end of our hiking for this week. Well, here in New York, anyway. Listen to that ice fall. Uh -huh. We're so going to get wet. It's spectacular. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we can keep going this way. Yeah, we can kill ourselves. There we go. Summit of Seward Mountain. 35 on the 45, uh, 46, and 101 on <laughs> 115, I think. Those numbers may be right, may be wrong. Who knows? Not important. But we made it. Definitely almost micro spike season. Um, not quite enough ice yet to use them which isn't always a good thing because it's like in between borderline using them and that's always the that's always seems to be the time when i take a tumble so anyways get a little spin of the summit and head back down the way we came it was like a little less than a mile from the intersection over to here so wasn't that bad exciting summit sign and trees Whoopee. Oh no. Hey, you have a rope? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> this is help me, yeah you got another Give inch. Me another inch. <laughs> Do you want me to go up first? Or is he. Oh, there's some folks up there. There's some voices. You want to make sure she's up there? Oh. Do you want to push? Uh, I got it. There you got it. Oh. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> oh. Mousy. Ah, you're lucky there's ice here. I would have caught you. Oh, there he is. He is a fat mouse, jeez him. You want food? He's coming after your ankles. <laughs> he's coming for you. Massachusetts person or New England? I'm person? from Maine. Are you from Maine? I yeah. Mean, I, I picked up on some sort of New England. Yeah. So we're going with this for the summit. 
of Donaldson. I looked up on Facebook uh, a year ago. There was a sign, couldn't find one, but yet we found a tree with nails in it. So look at the pine tree right there. There's a couple of nails. Some was tied there for a while, and it's right on the viewpoint. So this is what we're going with officially the summit and that was the tree right there done and done where we just came from And there's where we're heading, Emmons. A little nub right there. Rugged terrain up here, for sure. Viewpoint before the summit. There's the summit right there. Getting there. Gonna climb up on the ridge and then it's just a ridge walk over. Easy peasy. Oh, we got a sign at the sign. Mount Emmons. Woohoo! Oh, yay. Um, Here we are, and that's a wrap. Last summit of this vacation. Um, we're going to head back down. Well, actually, we're going to go back over. <laughs> What's it? Donaldson and then uh, about four miles down back to our campsite spend the night at camp and then we'll wake up whenever we wake up hike out it's only like two miles of the car get in the car maybe get some breakfast or lunch depending on how long we sleep and then start the six hour drive home here we go Emerson done for 37 of 46 and 104 of 115 <laughs> Nice, yeah, nice firm tree. <laughs> Happy New Year! <laughs> splash, splash. Oh, I gave up. <laughs> Probably shouldn't. Like cold, so. <laughs> Your shoes will be frozen in the morning. How'd you see me? I think I saw the red light. I saw a light. I, mean, I don't know what I saw. <laughs> <Fine>. <laughs>
day nine. Packed up. A little less than two miles out to the car. Brushed my teeth, scrubbed them because I forgot my toothbrush. So it's been two days, which is, I'm usually one of those people who brush my teeth more than once a day. <clears throat> and then we're gonna go find out if the new Mark Diner is open for breakfast. Uh, I think that's Lake Placid. Not 100% sure, but on the way home, so will break up my six hour drive into one hour and an hour and a half, and then a four and a half. <laughs> So, woohoo! So last night, on basically on our way down from the Rim Mountains, we were on the herd path, um, following Calkins Brook, and we saw. I heard. Well, I heard first actually a whistle being blown, but because of the brook, I wasn't sure exactly what it was at first. And then I stopped and listened, and I definitely heard a whistle. And then we saw a headlamp. So, but we thought that the trail turned. So we, at first we thought somebody was just messing with us. And then I yelled out, finally, we got kind of parallel with him, the headlamp. And so I yelled out, hello. And he said that he was, he was lost. And um, so I told him to walk to us because he was on the other side of the river and he wouldn't, he wouldn't come over. And he kept telling me to keep going because he had people coming for him. Now we had talked to his group earlier that day. He made a wrong turn and said he was at the river crossing and they told him to stay there. So we kind of assumed that his friends were coming for him. So we kind of, you know, talked to him for a bit. He said he was okay. You know, he kept telling us keep moving, keep moving. So we finally moved on got down the intersection never saw his friends on the way back up we knew they were ahead of us so we knew they had already gone down we ran into a couple guys camping at the intersection they said that the last three people were lost themselves and on so the wrong side of the brook they saw the headlamps and told them how to get back to the trail so out of a group of 10, it sounds like four people needed assistance in being rescued or find their way. So anyway, the kid, um, so, I, so I heard those guys camp and told us that there was a person that they had gone by 20 minutes before. So I hoofed it down, trying to catch up with him, came across the ranger on his way in, looking for him. So he hit, who was coming for him was a ranger, not his friends. Whoa. So I told the ranger where exactly he was and that he wouldn't come with me. And the ranger was, you know, frustrated because I guess he had another rescue to do. <coughs> and they're sh so short staffed and overworked with all these rescues lately. So anyways, short, so moral of the story, I guess, is I screwed up because I should have gone to him. I didn't realize he was such a new hiker. The ranger said he was, he was like a second hike or something. So, and that it's common that when they tell them to stand, stay in one spot, they literally stay there no matter if they could get rescued earlier. Um, Cause we would have crossed paths with the war ranger. There's only one way back out to the trailhead. Um, so, I mean, I kind of screwed up. I didn't know any better. I've never been lost. Never had dealt with anybody that's been lost. Well, I've been lost, but I've always got myself out. <laughs> and I would have went with anybody at the point at that time. But anyways, um, so the ranger, I could have saved the ranger about three miles of hiking, but I told him exactly where he was, um, which ranger had his position because the kid had Verizon and Verizon has signal in this area. So he lucked out there, but he seemed really upset, but wouldn't go with us. I told Tracy, I mean, what are we supposed to do? I mean, we can't make him go. So, I think next time I'll know. I'll know that, try to think like a lost person that was told by the authorities to stay put. He literally did what he was told. So I'm assuming he got out. I didn't hear him go by. We camped on the tra off the trail. They would have went by, but we never, we never heard him go by at night or saw him or anything. But like I said, the ranger had his GPS coordinates. 
had I had told him exactly where the kid was. So, anyways, lesson learned for me, lesson learned for the kid, hopefully. And we'll all come out with a little bit more knowledge. So, and that was our second rescue this week that we've seen. Two rangers rescuing people. And we assisted in a dog recovery that was lost for two days. What an interesting week. Anyways, batteries almost gone. Memory cards almost gone. So that is going to wrap up this nine days in the Adirondack. Um, we'll be back next weekend for the Dixes. Three day, two night. And then we'll have one more weekend out here to do two day trips. Stay in a hotel that weekend. And we will be 46ers. So anyways, if you like this video, hit the like button. New to the channel, hit subscribe. Look me up on Instagram, Trail Slipper. Um, got any questions, post them below. Suggestions, whatever. So anyways, this is to be continued until the Dixes.